I immediately loved the script because I felt that there was a element to Jesse's pilot episode that felt more authentic and wasn't trying to fit into any box. Oftentimes when you write like, quote unquote, like terrible people or bad people, what usually happens is you, you find this redeeming quality and when you're talking about the elite 1% of the 1% of the 1%, um, you know, you want it to be on, you know, you want it to feel authentic. And yeah. so I already fell in love with the project with the pilot. So you're going to come in here with, yeah, well, hmm, with your whole face and everything. And you're saying no to all my calls? No. Ken, you're going to have to give me something. Honestly, I think there was only going to be two episodes of Stewie. Um, and I think that he was a blank canvas a little bit. But I kind of remember going through a bunch of different versions of how this character could be. And we kind of landed on that was really good at what he does, um, incredibly powerful, money is the only thing that guides him, yeah. and uh, doesn't lie. What I do know is there is a sense of confidence from people that are in the elite class that we're now seeing here in America with the Black Lives Matter movement, what we're seeing is there's a confidence and an arrogance about being more powerful than everyone else because of class and money and, 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 and race, really. Yeah. And then, quite honestly, I think, Jesse, the brilliance of the show is, is that Jesse, as a writer and the writing team, kind of live in the improv world and in the improv world there's this very famous kind of like theory of like yes and you know what I mean the idea is yes and like hey uh, yes and I'm a da 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 and so when I think they saw Stewie and some of the other characters in the show instead of being like no my, my show is this way they're like yes and this guy let's see what we can do and then it just started like percolating and building off of that and a lot of that has uh, is, uh, is is I think the relationship that Jeremy and I were finding and I think a lot of that was with regards to the show itself. I think the issue here sir is that everyone fucking hates you. I think like the tail the, the beginnings and the tails of the lines there's a little bit of spark there. Everyone gets a take or two where you get to, like, fuck around. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, um, with regards to, like, completely rewriting lines and scripts, i got to be honest with you, I think, I think the lines are great. And so yeah. I have a really great time saying those juicy lines. You know, in the end of season two, all of that, you know... You know, poo poo comes out of your nose holes. That's all like written down. I just, it's my job to make that feel honest and real and authentic. Yeah. Um, and so there's a little bit of it that you want to stick to the script and feel it. And there's a little bit of it that you want it to like branch out and like, you know. Um, also, we don't rehearse. You know, we, we famously don't rehearse very much. We kind of know where we stand, but we don't rehearse. So. If all of a sudden some shit happens and all of a sudden something breaks or something says something funny and you have to react, yeah. you have to like be. I think what you what I think what is addictive about the show, removing myself from it, you know, removing myself from it. When I look, when I watch the show, and I see everyone, what's addictive about it is that it feels authentic. Yeah, and it feels like people are being messy, and people are kind of finding their own you know, juicy stuff, and the credit should be, you know, a lot of it is on the unbelievable writing and the atmosphere that the production has set, and, and what Steve, you know, has amazingly done at the production is like, that's all around us. It's our ability as actors to just live and be, yeah. and not try to add too much Shit. Local TV? Dad, nobody watches TV. Why shouldn't we do all the news? Uh, well, Kim Jong Pop, because that's not how things work in this country. We do shoot in a very peculiar way. Yeah. Um, I will say this. One is we shoot on film. Yeah. We don't shoot on digitally, which raises the stakes for everybody. Um, we shoot like, you know, I don't know how much your audience might know about this, but in America... On a, on a network television show, you know, six to eight pages is all you can do in one day. 
But on Succession, it's different because sometimes it's 12 pages in one location. So let's take the wedding for an example. There's millions of characters that are around, yeah. and we're all in the room together. Yeah. And sometimes we actually don't know where the cameras are because there's so many people. The cameras are like all the way over there and all the way over there and all the way over here. And every time you just have to like, when it's your turn, you just start talking and acting. Not even knowing where the camera is. That's not always the case, but on the big set pieces where there's so many actors around, you, have, you just can't even think about cameras. You can only think about characters and just being alive. And so oftentimes I'm kind of like, did you get it? Like, did you even get, like I, I said the line, but it's like, oh yeah, we got it. And so that's why when you watch the show, there's oftentimes in the foreground there's a scene and all of a sudden they walk away from the scene and all of a sudden in the back there's two people talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have certain subtle clues, but, you know, so that's one way of doing it. And the other thing is, again, this is credit to the, uh, the actors, again, removing myself from it. We're all theater people. And in the theater, if the, if the glass falls in the ground and breaks... You have to play with that. Th it's, there's, no, there's no cut reset. It's like, go. Yeah. Just... He's not going to make it. He's got another pressing matter. Oh, he's got a more pressing matter than us taking his empire off his hands? Really, I think that what, what Jesse is really getting at here is the problem with this type of billionaire class or trillionaire class is that, is that there are no consequences. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, that, Zero. there are no consequences at and, all. And, and we also know, and you know as well, that in, on the show, how many times are... PR firms brought into the mix of these are PR firms that are going to kill a story. Yeah. And that is haunting. You know what I mean? That's haunting and scary. I don't know what season three holds for us. I think I think probably Brian Cox is the only one that knows what's happening in season three. Um, the rest of us, I have no idea. I kind of am a big fan of the show. I also don't want to know too much. Yeah. I mean, I have to when I read the script, but... Um, with regards to, you know, with regards to what we're going to do next season, it's hard to say with COVID. I mean, I don't know what, yeah. I don't know where we're going to fly to, you know. I, I've heard rumors that before COVID, we're going to fly to these miraculous places that I can't say, but they were miraculous and amazing. I mean, a lot of the traveling is due to the fact that the ultra-wealthy can get anywhere within yeah. five hours, yeah. really. 